Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts, and we did part one on this. We so talked about the frame and the adjuster and some of the wheels and stuff. This is the YouTube, what I call the Pro Shaper YouTube English wheel. We featured this in a bunch of videos on YouTube uh, a couple, three years ago. So, in the first installment, we just quickly made this little panel here. It's a super simple panel. It's dead flat up here. Had a little crown down here. And all we did was the actual surface of the skin. We didn't do any of the tipping and uh, all that little detail finish work, which we could do in another video. But the point of this was to show you how easy it is to make some of these patch panels. So we thought that uh, it would be better to go to a part two on this and make this. This is a 1967, 66, 67, I believe, Alpha duetto um, little spider I actually had one of these in 1970 I bought it uh, used in Boston it was smashed in the front and the back wonderful car it's got a little four-cylinder in it I think it was a 1600 uh, cc engine five-speed transmission rear drive solid rear axle beautiful car I was six foot four at the time I've shrunk a little bit I could fit in that thing perfectly so I just love these cars. I ended up selling it to my friend who still has it. So I picked up this uh, new fender. It's missing a section. This section here has been cut off. It's it's pretty simple uh, fender, but it, as we showed uh, earlier, let me do it again. We'll get a straight edge here. We put this straight edge here. And it's got about an inch and three eighths of rock in it or so. Even on the side, it's got uh, well, at least an inch or so. On the top, about the same amount. And then it has right here where the surface flow goes down, it's coming up like this. So you have a curve going this way, but then in the valley of the curve, you've got a rock. So that's a reverse curve all along that edge right there. Then it has some features such as a gutter for the hood. So we're gonna do an attempt, a quick attempt to make this skin like we did this one. This one only took like literally three minutes or so. This one will take a little bit more time and we're gonna wheel it the whole way. We could pound it out on a beater bag or on the shrinking facilitator and stuff. We could shrink it, but then you have to clean up all the shrinks. But we'll, we'll just uh, wheel like a madman on it and uh, puff that up with the, uh, the wheel. We're using 20 gauge. I haven't measured this, but I'm pretty sure it's 20 gauge. These were stamp panels too. They weren't handmade. And we're not gonna attempt to do any of the detail work. We might continue the series and do some of the detail work. In the case of making this fender, I'd make this section and I could incorporate this one into it, but I didn't. So. I'd make this section, this section, and this section, and add all the details to it. The only detail I wouldn't add would be this gutter. I'd probably make this gutter separate and weld that in. So I had Mark earlier make a flexible shape pattern, and this is a super precise method of capturing the surface information. And you can see, if you take the shape pattern, put it on a flat bench, it tells you exactly what you have to do. And the, the uh, most important feature here is you got a mountain here and it seems to be going downhill right here. So if you were skiing this mountain, you would start over here and ski downhill like this. That has about two inches, maybe a little bit more of uh, uh, rise to it. And my general rule of thumb is if you have three inches, you should do some shrinking. So this could, this could tolerate a little bit of shrinking over here, but then you have the reverse curve too. So this is all standard compound curve here, but when you have a flexible shape pattern and then you're pulling it off a surface that has reverse curves, you'll see how that pops up right there. So that means that edge has to be stretched. When you're doing reverse curve work, the edge has to be stretched. When you're doing standard compound work, the center of the panel has to be stretched. And this tells you exactly where you gotta stretch it. Most here, less and less as you go here. 
Now you see this tip pulling up over here. That tip is what I call cowlick. That's not a reverse curve. That's just popped up like a, a cowlick in your hair. And here, what you have is you have a situation where it's not cowlick. That that has extra material that's needed on that edge, and that's why it forces itself up all the time. So we're going to take this, and we have a blank. And move the fender over a little bit, and here's our blank. And I've got uh, ample extra all around to make to accommodate the uh, the edging that has to be done. We're going to tip an edge right here, and tip an edge around the headlight, and also in the back. And we'd have a tip here where we would join this uh, gutter into it. So the flexible shape pattern gives you the information of the surface, how much stretching and shrinking needs to happen, but it doesn't tell you the arrangement or how it has to be bent. So once you get this area value in, then you have to set the arrangement value. And the arrangement value is all determined by these gauges that Mark made up earlier. And each one has an index in it. This is number six. And I gotta decipher Mike's, uh, Mark's uh, hieroglyphics here. Number six is over here. And we put these little gauge marks on offset. And they're supposed to be cut off too. You didn't cut them off. You see, I marked it, but I completely forgot about that one. Uh, this one didn't get cut. All the other ones get cut. I always pick the bad one right off. He doesn't like that. So, during intermission, we'll cut those off. So, the reason for this video also is to spell one of the myths that this panel has what appears to be a lot of crown to it. It's not that much. It has, a, would say, a medium crown, low to medium. A lot of people will look at that and they'll say, oh, I got to choose the anvil that has the shape. And they'll pull an anvil up like this and they'll, they have gauges and stuff and you put the gauge on and, or they'll put the anvil in like that. And, oh, that'll work really good. Well. That does work, but it doesn't make a good panel. It'll make a real striped or wheel mark panel. What we're gonna use is the number two wheel. This is, uh, let's see, we got the, we want this one here, I believe. It's got a little bit of crown into it. So we loosen that, loosen that up. Make sure we get the right one. Yeah, we want this one here. So obviously, this one looks like it wouldn't work because, see, there's a big, it, it's hitting right on the edges. But watch and see, that'll work really fine. One of the comments that, that were in the, the last video was um, they asked me if I have flats or, or, or uh, radiuses on my anvils. And we make them all in-house here. We have a CNC lathe. We make our own anvils. A lot of, and one guy says, why do you always say we? Well, I have employees. That, that's why I say we. So I don't do everything. I direct it sometimes, but I don't necessarily do it all the time. So the anvil has a bunch of features. Uh, we'll start at the edge. This is a, a relief radius. And that can be a bunch of different values. You can have a sharp edge with very little radius on it, and that'll work a lot of the times, but those, what happens is these bite. And you'll, that term, edge bite, is really important. That's why uh, I have wide wheels, because when you have a narrow wheel, top wheel, you'll always get these edge bites unless you hold the panel completely at zero at a horizontal. This is really forgiving. It holds the panel for you and you don't have to worry about the edge bite. Now we do relieve the edges a little bit because you still can get edge bite, but nothing like uh, compared to a, uh, a narrow top wheel. 
So these, depending on the panel you do too, say you have a panel that's a low crown, but it leads into a strong radius. If you get over there too close with a, a, a small radius on, on the anvil, it'll, it'll bite right into that radius part of the panel. So you can have a radius uh, or, or a profile on your anvil that has the same profile but different radius values out on the edge. So it's, it's, anvils can be like hammers. You can have 20 different uh, body hammers. Uh, it doesn't make you a better body guy to have 20 different body hammers, but it gives you options. So um, there's, there's probably a, an unlimited number of body hammers. There's probably an unlimited number of specialty wheels that you could make that will make your day a little easier and the job easier. Uh, but it's not absolutely necessary that you need it. So we're starting out here, this radius value, and then you have a radius going towards the center on both sides. And an anvil has what I call drop off. And this has about, let me see, probably about 80 or 90 thousandths of an inch of drop off from the center here. That's the crown of sorts. But in the center, you're going to make a flat initially. That's your contact area. And your contact area is super important. If you want to get a panel that's not all striped with wheel marks, you have to have at least about a quarter of an inch of contact area. Anything less than that, 3 16 you might be able to get away with it, but you get down to an eighth of an inch of contact area, it's going to make, uh, like furrows, like in a farm, uh, it's going to make these wheel marks. So you have a radius, you have a straight or a flat in the contact area, and then you have to have a transition zone. So initially the contact area can be very wide, but then you've got to make it tangent with this outer radius. And then these outer radius has got to be tangent with this edge radius. So there's a lot of complexity to it and you have to finish these by hand. Uh, you can't get a polished surface like that out of a, a, even a CNC lathe. You have to clean them up. So a lot of people are afraid to try to clean them up, but you have a lathe built right in if you watch my last video where you can drive the wheel and, and sand it and polish it right here on your yoke by spinning it, either the top wheel or the bottom wheel. And then you want to make sure it's concentric and you can do that too the same way. So let's get started with this panel. We'll get the wheel and set up here. And we have the panel. We want to make sure it's dust free. We set it on that uh, blanket. It's going to pick up a lot of dust. I should put a piece of wood underneath that. So let me, let me get a couple two by fours to set this on. And every time you set the uh, flexible shape pattern on, it'll leave some of the uh, plaster dust. We killed, when we take these off, this stick here, and we have to plaster dust them. And that stick, um, is now killed, but it leaves a little residue of the plaster dust. You set it on there. And a lot of students, when they're at my class, will make the mistake of not cleaning the panel. And it's effectively uh, pushing the plaster dust right into the metal. So you got to be on top of that and keep that, keep that good and clean. All right, so let's get started. Uh, at this early stage of the game, it's not uh, that important. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm going to read the panel. I will do a little bit of tracking uh, and, you know, taking time to make sure that I'm being real precise about my wheeling, but uh, oftentimes I just uh, read the panel as I'm going. So when you get a panel this big, I do have a, a table that I slide in underneath here, but I don't have it on this one. You can go this way and do the whole thing. That'll work. You can see this wheel has about a quarter of an inch of contact area. You can see the, the marks here. Like I said, I could take this to the beater bag and beat it all up with a mallet and uh, get that area value in there really quick, or I can wheel it the whole way. This will shine up. Uh, you'll see a little mark is starting on the wheel already. It's pulling oil out of the steel. 
so we'll have to what we've washed it good with lacophene but it's very porous and there's still oil there and we'll have to clean it again whenever you see that little line in the center then that tells you you should clean your wheel we'll, we'll work with it a little bit here so i got a really light pressure on here it's all going to be flippy floppy i can work it that long way or i can work it this way well it's dropping off that's that's the bane of working by yourself without that table if you put a table there the table will support for you so remember i need most of my action right here that's where the flexible shape pattern was telling me i need more area that's the beauty of the flexible shape pattern it tells you exactly what you have to do now if you have a buck whatever it is a wire form a wood station buck and i hate wood station bucks wire forms are so much easier because you can clamp to them you can see what you're doing if i had a buck the buck's not going to tell me anything until i get the panel almost made well how do you know where to put what without the flexible shape pattern you can use gauges you can make the panel with strictly with gauges now remember you go in with a little pressure you go in at a 45 and it lets you right in So the panel will start to get a little strength once we get a little bit of area value into it. The area value means we're expanding the surface area in a methodical way here. Now, how much pressure? Well, Mark's already, it's 10 o'clock. Mark is supposed to go home already. But if I stay at this pressure, we're going to be here for a couple hours. And Mark's going to get the really kind of bitchy. bitchy. <laughs> so let's give it a little more pressure. Our wheels always feature one uh, of the balls here. A different color we have a red one so if you watch the position of that red ball then you know where you're at as far as the pressure goes so I, I pumped it up probably uh, uh, almost a quarter turn or so and we should get a little more action out of it now, I've been neglecting this end so I'm going to give it a little attention on this end Now these are called stop marks. I don't know. See, if you have higher pressure and you just abruptly stop, or and it's got a it's got a, a droop on it or something, you're going to get these horrible marks. Don't worry about those. Those will all come out after. They come out and wash. So if you're doing strictly tracking patterns, you would be super methodical about it. And we know that we want more over in this end here, so we might do a situation where we're, we're going closely spaced. We go back and forth four or five times, and then we come once or twice over in here, and then four or five times over here, which concentrates the effort to the end that you want it. And I do do that to a certain degree, but I'm not a, I'm not a, a zealot on that method. And we're so early in the game here that uh, all we're trying to do is get some surface area happening fast. So we'll put it on the flat bench in another minute and we'll be able to see what our progress is so far. And I really don't care what the panel looks like. I, I can make this in a way that it looks sort of like the fender right away. But I don't care about what the fender looks like. I just want to create that area value. That's my whole goal.
Now the panel is starting to self-support because it has a little arc in it and it's got a little area change. It's a super smooth wheel, very nice. Let's put it on a flat bench and see what we got now. So we have a nice super flat bench right here. We'll take the flexible shape pattern off, get the gauges off of there. We'll put this on that nice bench and then we will read where we're at. So this is the front of the panel. This is the rear of the panel. So we'll puff this up and we'll see how much more we gotta go. We're gonna deal with this reverse curve last. We're gonna get the area value in here to puff this up. Now, this is how much we have. Let's see if we can guesstimate how much that is. Let's see. We need to get a... We'll put this here like that. And push that in. So that is about an inch, an inch and an eighth maybe. And if we, so we've got, a little bit of crown in it already. Let's put this back over here like that. And now you can see we've gained almost half of the way in just a matter of a few minutes. So a little more and then we should gain another half. We could increase the pressure. As you increase the pressure, your wheel marks will be a little more prominent but they'll all come out, you loosen it up and you can wheel out all the wheel marks, all the little stop marks and all the, the bad stuff. It's sort of like when you're brushing paint with a paintbrush and you might not get your strokes just right. On the last coat, you very lightly hit it with that paintbrush and you can get almost a spray job. So, put the gloves back on, we got the uh, Plaster dust off, very important. You don't want to embed that into the panel. And the flexible shape pattern tells us exactly what we have to do. I'm going to turn the panel around. Yeah, that's where I was before. Let me give it a little more pressure. We'll watch that red ball now. We'll put it over here. That's a big increase in pressure now. Mark is getting the answer. He's got to go home. Now, we might not get this panel totally finished tonight, but we'll get it close. Now I can do it halvesies like this. Let me turn around like this. It's self-supporting now, so I don't have to worry about the flopping down on me. Now these wheels, the way we make them, we make them out of tubes. So they're, they're very lightweight, and that allows you to move it a lot faster. 
It's crazy to get a big giant billet of metal like that, which you pay a ton for today if you know metal prices going up, and then have to cut away 70% of it to reduce the uh, weight on it. So we have aluminum sides on them, and they're heat treated to 64 Rockwell. You, know, you never mark them up. My bottom anvils I don't heat treat. I find that you really don't need to. We make them out of uh, a, a material that's uh, called stress proof or pre-hard. And that, that yields about a 40 Rockwell, which we'll mark up, but they're uh, pretty, pretty strong and resistant to, to, to just casually mocking them. You have to do something really stupid to, to bug them up. As you can see now, the panel's starting to shine as we're working it. I don't dance. All right. Yep. Careful observation, close observation. These gloves shed. Every type of glove sheds. And it looks like I've got a little bit of shedding. So I want to make sure I got that wheel clean. Might have picked up a little, either sometimes a fleck of metal or some stuff from your gloves. I wore gloves on this one because I didn't clean the edges. We were in a hurry. So I got some little tiny micro printing in here. I just want to check the top wheel. It needs a little clean with lacquer thinner anyways. All right, so we cleaned up the wheel, the top wheel with uh, lacquer thinner. And then uh, we cleaned the panel up. And let's see, do an assessment of where we're at now. So we puffed this up. Remember we were at about an inch and an eighth or so before. Now we put that straight edge there and we push down on it. Now we're probably seven eighths of an inch or so. Down here, look at this, it's hardly, it's, it's almost perfect. So I really don't have to go so much in here. I'll probably lay off of this. Let's just keep pumping this end over here. It's just like we're inflating it. You just got to look for the, the truck to inflate it. So right in here, we're going to puff that up. Tells you exactly where to do it. Now don't, don't forget, we sell the correct tape on our website, proshaper.com. You make those flexible shape patterns. We have a kit that includes uh, three rolls of the low stick, three rolls of the fiberglass reinforced, and three rolls of the blue vinyl 1 8 inch tape. These are all premium tapes. I've researched it and found the best. We buy them in volume. We sell at a really low price compared to what everybody else is selling at. So don't think you're going to go to Staples and get a better deal. You're going to get lousy tape and you're going to pay about twice as much. So. I lo loosened it up. I gotta tighten it up again. Yeah. Remember, we're gonna work mostly on that end now. We were right about there. Let's pop it over to there. 
And remember, we're putting a medium crown into this panel with a very low crown wheel. All right, I, I pumped it up pretty good. Remember, we're doing the a medium crown panel with a low crown wheel. We're never, we're never gonna work with a high crown anvil to, to make this panel. We wanna have a nice smooth surface. We're working mostly just on this end over here because we know we need extra material there. Yeah, you see how that, that edge is flapping around? Don't let that scare you at all. We, we'll get rid of that with a 45 action. Show you that in a minute. That happens on every panel. We're just building the center up, coming out to the sides a little bit. Both sides are gonna do the, the wave. They're gonna need a little attention. That doesn't mean they need to be shrunk. You never, 99.9%, .9 we do not use a shrinker stretcher, a kick shrink stretcher to make panels. We only use that on detail work. Mm -hmm. How nice that's shining up now. Now there's all kinds of stop marks and flaws and everything, but that doesn't mean anything at this point in the development of the panel. I'm going to come down here a little bit because it still needed a little attention in the middle. Remember, we were at about seven eighths of an inch where we still needed seven eighths of rise still in the panel to get to where we wanted to be. Now remember I popped out, now I go in at a 45 and that lets me right in. I don't think anybody mentioned our new uh, background that we have. We're trying to up the production value of our videos. So we made this, uh, this is actually my drawing board. We're gonna have two sides to it with galvanized. And we hung our banner on there. We're gonna use this for videoing and uh, probably uh, like a whiteboard at the classes too. So it's gonna have multiple use potential. We actually hung some, uh, I've got a whole bunch of uh, Alpha GTV brand new, new old stock fenders. 73, 74 GTV fenders and uh, we hung them on there the other day took some photos and used it as a, a way to present the photos we put it up on my Facebook page and uh, trying to sell them anybody has a GTV out there needing 73 74 GTV needing rear quarters get in touch with me I got some factory originals new old stock in really nice shape three rear quarters and th uh, two front fenders. The front fenders are both lefts of the rear quarters. One is a, a, pair, a two or a pair, and then I have one extra left. All right, let's see what we got now. seven eighths of an inch we're getting really close down in here you can see there's like no bounce in the flexible shape pattern this is the most bounce here let's see if I can hold that steady right like we get a rest here All right. oh look at that that's about a half an inch now 
just a half an inch. So we've gone from two plus inches down to a half of an inch. Now like I said, uh, it's getting late. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish it. it looks like we're gonna have to put pot three on this, but let's bring it a little bit closer. All right, so we're down to a half an inch. Let's see if we can uh, pop this up a little bit more. We still got a lot of pressure on there. We went right in there, no problem. I don't, I don't have any uh, quick releases on my wheels. I just find they're stupid. Why do I find they're stupid? Well, you're over here. Doesn't matter if you have a kick adjuster or a top adjuster and you want a quick release it and you got a panel like this, it's like impossible. So just go in at a 45 degree angle, you can get in and out of a panel, no problem. A lot of the Chinese wheels have uh, quick adjusters on them because they've seen wheels with the quick releases on them and they just copy everything. I don't think there's any Chinese English wheel coach building masters that I know of. I haven't seen any YouTube videos or features anywhere on any medium. But it may be somewhere in China someone's learned how to actually wheel pretty good. I know there's a lot of people in Indonesia and Thailand and just about anywhere in the world, Japan, some incredible masters. There's a, a guy in Thailand, he, he puts a lot of his material up on Facebook. He works in stainless. It looks like he's got a bunch of young helpers and stainless is just an absolute bear to work with. And he makes these beautiful sculptures. Um, he does a lot of like uh, fish and octopuses and he just did this humongous cat probably about a year ago or so as a sculpture. The thing was about 20 feet long, all out of stainless. And he developed some innovative techniques too. He's, somebody, and it's impossible to pronounce a Thai name, but I'm a friend of his and vice versa on Facebook. I watch his stuff. He's very talented, very skilled. You can see how nice that's shining up now. No need to go to an exercise club. I guess it was Gene Winfield's birthday today. I saw her on Facebook. He's 95. He's worked hard all his life. And uh, it looks pretty good. Hopefully I'll get there. My goal is 103. I want to be wheeling when I'm 103. The reason for that was one of, one of the guys at my grandfather's restoration shop, Cecil, lived to 102. He still had all his marbles and all his knees and sockets and joints were all working. And, uh, his teeth were there, his hair was there. He just gave out at 102, so I'd like to beat him. 103 sounds good. So we're just getting started here at Pro Shaper. We've been at it for 59 years, but we're just getting started. Started when I was 12 years old at my grandfather's. Not wheeling, but restoration work. A lot of restoration experience. I sort of hate restoration now. I want to get everybody just building cars. That's where the fun is.
You don't need no stinking buck when you have a flexible shape pad, but you can only have a flexible shape pad if you've got a good surface to copy. But it allows you to make both sides too. I can make a left side or a right side of that fender with the information we captured with that flexible shape pad. So let's see where we're at now. All right, I'd say we're down to about a quarter of an inch there. This is just about there. That's beautiful. Now what you want to be careful of is, and I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. You have to show everything seven times according to my friend who taught high school. If I went too much right here, that would pop that up. And I'm going to simulate uh, too much by just putting this paper underneath here. And I put that paper under there and you see what's going to happen? That isn't a cowlick. That isn't this. See, this lays down really nice. This won't lay down. See how it waves on you? So that's what I call a tent pole. It's overdeveloped. And to fix that, you would have to relieve it by wheeling like crazy on this edge or shrinking that down with heat. And uh, neither of those you want to do unless you uh, just make a crazy mistake. So how do you avoid that mistake? By paying attention. Wheel, wheel, check, check. Wheel, wheel, check, check. You don't wheel, 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 check. Oops. So we've got a little bit more to go here. It's about uh, 1035 or so. Mark has given me the wrap it up and uh, looks like we're going to have to make this into a part two uh, so next week Tuesday this is Thursday Mark will put this video up on Friday next Tuesday we'll do part two of making this fender section showing you how you can make a medium crown panel with a low crown wheel just by the technique you use and also showing a lot about the English wheel and the, uh, the flexible shape pattern. Please remember to subscribe. Give us the like, some good comments. Hit that notification bell. Tell all your friends. Share them in the uh, share these videos in in forums. We want to keep building our subscriber base. Thanks for watching. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts.